Hello everyone and welcome to another part of the SDL 2.0 tutorial series and in this video we will be finalizing our framework. So uh, since this will be the final video for the framework development I will be uploading a link to the uh, finished, finished framework uh, so that you can download the files and compare them to the ones that you have. I went through the whole thing and I commented it out and um, I will leave that link in the description of this video. So uh, the purpose of this video is to fix a few bugs that I found while going through that, this, the framework to comment it. And uh, the first one being in assetmanager.cpp. So in here, in the destructor of this class, we did not clear the mmusic and msfx maps. So this is the first thing that we need to fix. And for that, we will just do the same thing that we were doing for the rest of the map. So for auto music in M music, if music dot second, so music dot second is not equal to null, then mix underscore free music, and this will take music dot second and then after that we will just say m music dot clear <clears throat> then we just need to clear the sfx as well so for auto sfx and m sfx if sfx dot second is not equal to null then mix underscore free chunk and this will take our sfx.second and finally the last thing that we'll need to do here is to just clear sfx so msfx.clear and this should be it for our asset manager so that deals with one of the bugs the other bug is much bigger and it is there are a few bugs in the game entity.cpp so we'll go through these and fix them a quick fix that we need to do is just uh, instead of using two vector twos here, we can just use a single one. It's not really a bug, but it was just kind of bothering me that we're creating two vector twos. So we'll just change the parent scale to just be called scale. And then all we'll do is just say scale.x times equals uh, our m scale.x and scale.y times equals m scale.y. And then instead of doing all this, we'll just return scale. So this should be it for, of course, this is in our game entity.cpp, and this is our scale getter. So this is what we need to do to change that. Now for the biggest bug that we have, which is the parent setter. <clears throat> so I'll try to explain what's going on here with this bug. The problem is that we're not checking if the parent is null or not. So uh, what I'm doing here is creating mtext1 and mtext2 and then setting it up so that if I press W, mtext1 becomes the parent of mtext2. If I press S, then it's not the parent anymore. So, so the parent becomes null. So if I try to run this, so we have here mtext1, this is mtext2. If I try to parent it to mtext1, you'll notice the snapping, so that's one of the bugs. And the other bug would be if we press S, it crashes because we're passing null and it's trying to get, where is it? Uh, it should be in parent, there we go. So we're passing null and it's trying to get null position. So that's what's throwing that exception. So let's start first by dealing with the null exception. So here we'll say if the parent is equal to null, <clears throat> then our M position is going to be equal to our world position. So M position is going to be equal to position in the world. M rotation is going to be equal to rotation in the world. And M scale is, is going to be equal to scale in the world. And that deals with us removing a parent. 
Now, uh, we're doing this because if we have an object, uh, for example, the same object that we have here and we attach it, uh, as you can see, it snaps still, so we still need to fix that. But we, what we need to do is to make it so that if we, um, if we remove it, it stays in the same place that it would be if uh, where it would be in the world. So its position, its rotation and scale should stay the same. So moving on now to setting the parent. And when we're setting the parent, so that would be else. So the parent that we're passing in is not null. There are two things that could happen. If we already have a parent, we need to remove the old parent so that we can set the new parent. So if m parent is not equal to null, set our parent to null. So we're calling the parent function here with null so that our position, rotation, and scale become the world position, world rotation, world scale. Next up, after that, we need to deal with our position. Our position needs to be relative to the new parent. So for that, uh, first we'll create a vector two and we'll call this one parent scale. And we'll use this one uh, quite a bit. So that would be parent scale in the world. And then we need to deal with the position. So for the position, the first thing that we need to do is figure out what's going on if the parent is not rotated. So what we had before is uh, M position minus the parent's world position. So if our position is here and the parent is here, subtracting our position from the parent position is fine and will give us the right, <coughs> the right uh, vector, our right uh, local position, which is pretty good, but it's a problem when the parent is rotated. So if the parent is rotated like that, and we try to subtract our um, our local, our world position from the parent's world position, we end up with a position that's right here. And that's what's causing the snapping because the parent is rotated and we're snapping to where it should be relative to the parent's axis if it was not rotated at all. So to fix this, uh, what we need to do is we know the parent's rotation and we know that we should be here. The difference between this point and this point is that it, if this point was here, it was rotated by the amount of rotation of the parent. So what we need to do is rotate back by the negative amount of the parent's rotation. So this is what we're going to do. Our M position is going to be equal to rotate vector. And this vector will be position in the world minus the parent's position in the world. And we will rotate by negative the parent's rotation in the world. And that takes care of where the, uh, where the local position should be. But there is another issue with scale. If the parent's scale is uh, scaled by, let's say, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, our position will end up somewhere right here because the scaling affects the position as well. So what we need to do is scale it as set our position according to the parent scale as well. So I will say that our m position dot x divide equals parent scale dot x. Our m position dot y divide equals parent scale dot y. And this takes care of all the position uh, transformations that we need to transform from world position to local position. Now for the rotation, the rotation is pretty straightforward. Our M rotation is going to be equal to, uh, <clears throat> is going to minus equal the parent's rotation in the world. And to explain why that works, um, let's say that our rotation was at 45 degrees. So our object is 45 degrees. And if the parent is sitting at 45 degrees as well, so our rotation should be, our total world rotation would be our rotation minus the parent's rotation. So our local rotation should be zero. And the parent's rotation is 45. That way, our total rotation is 45. 
So this covers the rotation. Next up is the scale and our M scale is going to be equal to a vector two of M scale dot scale dot X divided by the parent scale dot X and our M scale dot Y divided by parent scale dot Y. And this will be our new scale. And this is because if our scale used to be 10 and the parent scale is two, we need to conserve our world scale. And to conserve it, we need to divide the 10 by two so our scale would be actually five, our local scale, so that when we're getting the world scale, since if we go up to scale here, we're multiplying the parent scale by our scale, we get five times two, which is 10. So we're conserving our world scale. And this will be it for parent setting. Now, if we try to run this, we have our text here. If we attach it, as you can see, it attaches normally and moves with the text. If I press S, it's removed and it, it conserves its position in the world, its rotation in the world and scale in the world. If I press W again, it's attached again and it keeps rotating with its parent. W, it's detached again. So this seems to be working well, which brings us to our last bug. <clears throat> and the last bug is, uh, well, has to do with the position and scaling of the parent. For example, let me set the parent scale to a vector two of, so vector two of 1.0f and 0.5f. And now if I try to run this and press W, as you can see, it snaps and then it goes into an oval rotation. And this should not be the case. The position while it's rotating should only depend, should always be when it's orbiting this way, when the parent is rotated, it should always be circular. And it's, and the reason that it's an oval is because in here, in our uh, get position, we're doing our scaling after we did our translation. And this should never be the case. Scaling should be done before translation. So if we go here, what we need to do is do M rotate, so rotate vector M position and create a vector two here. And this vector two will be M position dot X multiplied by the parent scale dot X. So we're doing our scaling before we do our trans translation. And the second one, the y, will be m position dot y multiplied by the parent scale dot y. And then over here, instead of doing this, all we would need to do is to um, set our, add our rotated position to that. And this should keep our child object to be rotating around the parent in a spherical orbit. So there we go, we have it here, we attach it. As you can see, it's rotating along with it in a circular orbit. So these are the bugs that I found while I was going through the code to uh, comment it. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If you find any bugs, please let me know. And I will make a video um, to explain how to fix these bugs, but this should be it for this video and this should be the last video for us to be working on the framework and since that's the case uh, we uh, I will be uploading the commented uh, project that I have so this is the commented project and this is what it looks like so I went through it and commented the sections on what each section does and why it's there as well as the functions as well to tell you what each function should do um, so I really hope that this video helped. I will start uh, probably another series for uh, for making a game using this framework. And the first game will probably be Galga, just like we discussed earlier. Other than that, um, if you have any suggestions, feedback, or comments, please leave them below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.